my name's Andrew Bergen and we're here in Grattansbrook, which is our farm just on the edge of a thigh in South County Kildare. This farm here is about 200 acres and we farm another 120 acres about 30 kilometres away near Newbridge. My family's been farming here for a couple of hundred years or more. I took it over from my father in the late 1980s. Now that I'm farming in a slightly less conventional way and that's a journey that started really by accident about six years ago when a guy locally was selling strip till drills and was demoing them around and I said well here why don't you sow a field for me and I thought this this works really well. So gradually we we moved to establishing all our crops that way so we haven't ploughed anything now I think for well, at least five years. Our system involves after harvest we'll usually try and establish a cover crop like we have here because we're trying to keep something, we're trying to build biology in the ground. We're trying to keep something growing in the ground for as much of the year as we can. This helps the, the structure and the texture of the ground, but also obviously helps the life in the ground and its ability to sustain a crop. The ground here is very fertile, but a lot of the fertility is not really available, so it's, it's, it's locked up in the soil. And if we, can, if we can access those minerals that are locked up in our land, we spend an awful lot less money buying in nutrients. We'll also probably raise healthier crops, which are going to be easier for us to mind and probably going to be healthier for our customers to, to consume afterwards. We're here in a cover crop that was sown six weeks ago after a crop of winter oats and in about another six weeks time we're going to put winter wheat into this field so it'll just be here for 12 weeks and in our early years of cover crops we mightn't even have bothered putting one in now but we have found if we can get it in really early like this went in about the 20th of July we get super growth so if you have a look at this so we've got sunflower here buckwheat daikon or tillage radish phacelia actually here is some bursine clover and linseed Excuse me. Yeah, the linseed here. So we're growing these at least as much for what goes on under the ground as what goes on above the ground. So we can take a quick look here at what sort of root development we've got at this stage. Yeah, here's the facility. The facility is not a particularly deep rooter, but it sends out quite a mass of fibrous roots. And what, what we'd like to see is a whole lot of different types of roots. So you know, you've got your radish that's going to burrow down deeply, but you've got other guys that are going to that are going to spread more widely. And really, we're we're trying to we're trying to condition the soil. We're also trying to feed the biology that's here, because if we've got a living if we've got a living plant here, it it can exude carbohydrates to feed the biology in return for which the biology will solubilize nutrients for it. We're, this is one of the big things that we're trying to encourage here generally and it's one of the main reasons to grow a cover crop between our cash crops because most of the biology depends on a depends on a living host like this so if it's not if there's nothing if there's nothing growing there it's going to go dormant and eventually die off so every, it means that every time we sow a cash crop we have to restart the process all over again so while we do spend some money on these crops we think that we're probably at least coming out quits on them most of the time generally speaking this is this is a really nice vigorous cover crop here uh, and we're well happy we put it in we're standing on a, a four meter grass margin that runs around well, it's four meters on parts of the field three meters on other parts and this was sown as part of the DLOS scheme and sown with a mixture of old type grasses there's coxfoot and timothy mostly in it and it's been here for four years now um, one of the reasons for putting it here was that this is a, a, a a stony headland along the side of the road with a row of poplar trees along it and between between the stones and the poplars it was really hard to get a crop to grow I'd say we probably lost money on crops on this four meters every year we sold crops so we put in the margin and it's been great to watch it develop and it's we didn't put in any clover in the seed but as you can see behind us now there's loads and loads and loads of red clover here and there's also just I'm particularly noticing this year there's black medic here which is just gone to seed here which is another legume so they're, um, you know, they're marching their way in here. If you were to sum up biological farming, its key characteristic is, may is maybe variety. You're trying to vary things. You're trying to make things probably a bit more natural. So what we try to do is, is maybe make it, make it more natural to stand back a little bit and allow, allow nature to do some of the work for us. We're still learning how to do that. I think I have about 35 harvests under my belt at this stage. Um, so I'm probably into the second half of my farming career. Now, I haven't increased output. I've had good years and bad years. I probably leveled it out a bit, but I feel much more in control of what I'm doing. 
and that's far more satisfying.